Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. So in the continuation of our series on the discussion that we are doing at how to do that uh, user session assignment to the time series data which is collected to the cream, uh, click stream analytics. We have discussed uh, the first part uh, in the first part about the about how we can associate user session with the different clicks that we kind of collecting uh, collecting to some sort of a click stream analytical tool like Google AdSense or say Yahoo uh, WebSense etc. Uh, today in this video we'll discuss on the second part we'll try to build a comprehensive solution which will acknowledges uh, both the rules that were that are defined as part of the session definition so guys uh, let's start on this and before I start I would I would like to request to all my uh, listeners and viewers that uh, please leave your comments uh, do like share and subscribe to the channel that will definitely give us a feedback in terms of uh, do we need to do any sort of course correction and if you want to suggest any uh, topics that you want to see a video on do comment us uh, in the comment box below so guys let's start uh, with our click stream analytics uh, with the Apache Spark so guys if we see here so this is the problem statement that we uh, and we discussed the first part of it in in the part one of the video uh, and the problem is we had been given with the time series data uh, which is a click stream of, of the user activity on any specific website or an application and the ask that we have here is to find out the relevant session for um, user session for each click event that we have received and the session definition is defined that uh, session expires after inactivity of one hour in the part one we took it half an hour but here for this one we have taken one hour uh, that uh, if there is there is no activity for one hour on a particular uh, application or website where a user is logged in he'll be timed out uh, and it'll create a new session and the second part is which is more complex obviously is that a, a particular session only remains active for a total of two hours even say user is actively using that particular session on a particular website or application but if the time goes beyond two hours he is kind of assigned to a different user session so let's start with this so if we see we have prepared uh, a user data uh, a simple data frame with two uh, columns click time and the user ID is assigned to it these are the click events that we have received and we have prepared this data to kind of acknowledge that one hour window so the first step uh, in this particular first step we'll trying to handle the first rule first of the session definition so here we created a window spec where we are doing the partitioning of data by user ID and ordering it by click time as the event or the ordering of click uh, is important here because the click can only be made in in certain sequence and then what we have done is we've calculated the lag of click times over this window as we discussed in part one lag is the previous record and we exactly previous as we did it one exactly previous uh, click time of the previous record and we then try to find out the difference between the two the the actual click time that we have received and the uh, click time of the previous event or the pre exactly previous click event and then we put a condition on top of that this is our TMO variable which is 3600 right which is uh, one hour which is uh, one hour of the difference that if there is no activity and so if if the difference between two subsequent clicks is if the difference between two subsequent clicks is uh, uh, more than one hour then it becomes a new session so what we have done here we have put a condition if the row number is one right on that window spec that means uh, if row number is means that means for that particular user for that particular user session that's the first click any which ways and if it's a first click then obviously it's a new session started and the second condition is if that time store if the time difference is greater than one hour if it is greater than one hour then also it's a new session per user right if it is within one hour then it is the same session otherwise it's a new session and new session we are representing with the zero value 
and you will relate it uh, by we have uh, taken zero value with when we'll look at the step two right and if it is not a first record and if it is not uh, greater than one hour the time difference between the two clicks will just take the time difference whatsoever it is right so based on that this is we'll get additional column of ts underscore df timestamp difference and if you see for this one this happens to be the first click for this user partition user one so that's zero similarly for user two this is the first click so that's also zero that means new session if you see this timestamp this 1210 that means a difference of above one hour so that's also a new timestamp and if you see here it's a it's a different day altogether next day around 24 hours so that's also a new session so based on the rule one we have uh, got the time difference and zero is kind of identifying a new session for us as part of the rule one session definition one right now if we look at this particular piece of code here we are trying to handle the rule number two which says even if the user is continuously active but his session span goes above two hours he's been assigned a new user session right so what we have done based on the data frame that we have received after applying the rule one which has three columns uh, click which has cl three columns right uh, click time user ID and TS difference we have taken that and we have done a group I on top of that with the user and then simply correct collecting the click stream as a list collect underscore list the entire click stream for the particular user say for user one all the number of click times all the records for click times will be collected as a single list so I'll get after applying this I'll get based on our data we'll get two records only one for user one one for user two and there would be two columns in that uh, one would be your click list which would be a list of entire all the uh, uh, the array of all the click click uh, times and another list would be uh, array of all the TS differences right and what we have done with this we have called in a UDF that we have written that's where the all the magic lies we have sent this all the prepared data in this UDF what we are calling as click session list and then we are selecting this will come to this later on but let's go to this UDF what it is trying to do so if you look at this particular UDF this is the UDF that we have we are calling in so this UD UDF is taking input as your user ID your click list the list that we have prepared by doing a, a group by on the user IDs and this is the time difference list TS list and what we are doing inside here is we have a small method written which is uh, assigning uh, taking some log value and assigning it to user ID this will give us that uh, user session value say if, if the user ID is u1 then we'll see if a session 0 if session 1 session 2 session 3 that's that's what this small method is written to give us that and uh, then what we are doing we are applied the fold left so what we are doing we are iterating through all the elements in the uh, in the list and we are iterating through all the element lives for only the time different list so if you see we have also passed the click list but just a pass through because eventually we'll use it here just to create the tuples so just to map it back with the uh, time stem uh, time difference list that we have passed so we are primarily playing on the timestamp list because what we have to do is we have to do some kind of running total to see if the the running total of different session time differences is going above two hours if it's going above two hours then I have to assign a new session right so what we are doing here we have taken two accumulators as zero and zero here uh, and doing four left and taken an empty list and then we are iterating it through the entire tier list <coughs> this is the iterator i this is the iterator i value for this particular ts list what we are checking is if i is zero right if i is zero i is zero means it's a new session right or my j plus i which I have j and k are starting with zero values is greater than tmo which is 7200 two hours then I'll call this method and I'll pass it plus one so that means it's a new session so I'm adding one to my existing session value and I'm increasing incrementing it by one so I'll create a new identifier for a new user session if in case that's not the case because that would not be the case where I'll have you know uh, TS values which were less than 
uh, one hour rule as per the rule number one so for that we are simply kind of calling it uh, we're, we're just calling it with the same value we're not doing addition so we are calling it with the previous session value so here it will return the previous session number user ID uh, minus existing session number right so that's how this particular UDF is written to calculate it and see if you see here if you see here we are putting it into this empty list that we have created so we have just taken a reverse of it because if you if you see that symbol they'll keep on adding it as the iterator goes through in front of the list so we just do a reverse and then we'll call this zip so that now I'm as I'm creating a tuple of my click values and associating it with the timestamp values right so the user uh, so wh what is the logic here is trying to do it's keep on trying to do the addition of different time different uh, time difference values that I have and subsequently adding that and it is starting from the fact wherever I have a new session started so let's look at it in detail with the with the with the logs how it is working so if I execute this step 2 and then I've simply exploded it because I'll get it, it, it in, a, in a single format everything is in a collected in a list per user and if we just explode it we'll get all the records of the array and if you see this is the output we are getting and if you try to analyze this output closely what we have seen here if you see this particular example if you see these particular two rows so here the difference between the two timestamp is less than an hour so ideally this two should be a this should be a same user right by the rule number one this should has to be the same value u12 u12 but if we see here it from from where the user 2 has started from this record here the user 2 is recorded and if you try to see the difference between 1210 and 1440 it goes above two hours right it all starts from here the u12 starts from here and if you go, uh, if we'll come all the way here, the difference between the first one, 1210, and 1440 is more than two hours. And if it goes beyond that two hours, the rule number two says it has to be a new user session, which is the case here, right? So it worked, but the solution is working perfectly fine. Another example, if you say the U13, the new session is started from here, 1530, and if it it goes here, uh, 1650, right? 1650 that means it is again uh, above two hours though if you see the difference between the two subsequent only 30 minutes so it should be same u13 but by the second rule it goes above two hours so it has also been assigned a new user session right now let's look into the logs I've collected so when I've, we have uh, executed that code and the uh, and the UDF has run so what we have seen let's see it quickly that will clear the picture so and let's before that let's also keep in mind this stack this is a zero value right this is the time difference value which goes as an input to the UDF right so let's try to analyze it analyze with it so the first value was zero when we iter iterated through the list of TS difference right and we did a calculation of i plus j which were the initial accumulator value passes passed to the four left zero plus zero so it says it's a new session right so we get a new session u11 one one, our second value it's again zero so it went here zero it says again it, it by any definition by definition of the rule one and also by the rule two it is within two hours but greater than one hour so it's it's a new session so it has given new session to it now come the next one next one is the actual t difference value and when we added it with the zero that's how we are iterating it through we are subsequently trying to add all those values here we try to add zero plus zero here we try to add zero plus three hundred so zero plus three hundred uh, it's not a new session by rule uh, by rule one right that's why it's not zero so we're trying to check for rule two rule two so it has to be the subsequent you know uh, running sum should be greater than two hours 7200 right but it is not so it is the user session is same same goes here if you see 300 plus 300 900 right 9000 sorry 9000 right it is again not 
not greater than two hours so same user session now if you see this six plus three yeah this is nine thousand which is greater than two hours uh, seventy two hundred so here if you see it's a new session right same goes here okay so now the new session has cut down so our calculation is only starting from uh, the where the new session boundaries are started so if for this particular entire range calculation right for this entire range calculation as uh, starting from where the new session was started from this value right so we are trying to check a span for one particular session that if it's going beyond two hours if it's going beyond two hours we are doing a running sum and then we'll assign a new user session to it now this is the insights let's try to do how all the things are happening in the solution for uh, rule number two that we have done so first thing we have done in the in, in in the solution for rule number two is we did a uh, group pi on the data frame that was received by applying rule number one so we did a group pi on user id and do a collect of list for click and all so if you see when we have collected the list we've got two records for user one and user two and everything is got in such form of an array so we've got two records and all the values for click list and all the values for time list are collected in a form of array applying these aggregate methods collect list correct that's the step number one we did there uh, the next thing that we have that we did is that before calling the explode we call that uh, UDF and uh, the seed value for it is the two hours that we have passed that we need to check in so if you see here what we have got as output from the the UDF is this click session this is this has been assigned to this column if you see if you look at this column it very clearly gives us that this particular uh, click time event is mapped to user session this so it has given up us the tuples this particular is mapped to this particular user session number this particular event is mapped to this particular so, the, the, so in this way it has given us the entire tuples right and then what we did uh, but this is also one record for one user as we have not exploded it so it's grouped by one user so we've got two records for each user and everything is in the form of uh, collection of list and then we called in on top of that we call the API explode explode will give us the, diff the all the values in the array as the different records of data frame right so this is the value of the click stream that we're getting now there's uh, one value of array item as one record so this click stream event is mapped to this user stuff and then eventually we have called the select where we have the user id and we have called the underscore one tuple and mark it as click time and underscore two two of the tuple as the session id and that's how the output of this come in this form where it clearly described that which click is associated with ses which session id based on both the rules right so guys this is how we have tried to write out the solution to handle both the session definitions on the click stream data that have received um, so if you guys have any better solution if you think that we can have a better solution in terms of performance and in terms of complexity of the code feel free to write in the comment or submit your solutions that's it in this video keep learning have a great day ahead bye bye